Hello and welcome to Watchers TV. Welcome here at the Watchers Club. Mark, and Mark, 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 Mark. Can you please say Swiss Watch Gang once? Okay then, well, welcome to the Swiss Watch Gang here in Geneva. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Gang. Welcome to another collector's interview. Today we are in the beautiful town of Geneva, the hub of watchmaking. And we are going to talk to a man and a collector, which probably all of you know. So, Mark andre de Schuh, welcome to the channel. It's super lovely to have you and I'm pleasure to see the office, you know, finally in live. So, thank you. Well, you're more than welcome. Very happy to have you here. And uh, I guess we're going to talk about some watches. Yes, absolutely. It's something we are both obsessed with. <laughs> Each with, uh, you know, specific brands and also we focus on, on different types of content as well. I got to just say at this point, I've been watching your videos since the time I started learning about watches. And uh, you, for me, you are the OG uh, <laughs> watch YouTuber, also representing Switzerland in the best light possible with what I think the biggest portfolio of videos on YouTube, also diversified a lot throughout the years. And yeah, I just learned a lot from your videos. So thank you for that, first and foremost, as, as a fan. And I'm super excited to basically also show the audience what you personally collect. As we know, you see, uh, we could say every watch out there. <laughs> so you must have very specific taste in how you collect. Yeah, well, um, the idea is just to show kind of different uh, uh, aspects that I appreciate uh, with watchmaking with uh, very different examples, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we've been uh, doing this for 10 years. We're celebrating our 10th anniversary this year, so this is already quite something. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And um, even though we've produced more than 1,000 uh, video reports, <laughs> 1,200 uh, video wow. reports since then, uh, we still haven't really repeated ourselves. I mean, there's so many stories, so many things to be said about this uh, wonderful uh, craft of watchmaking. And we're very privileged indeed because, I mean, first of all, we're here in Geneva, like you said, in the middle of it. So we have access to some uh, pretty cool uh, mm -hmm. people and uh, brands and products. Furthermore, the, 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 the goal is that for us, it's we don't necessarily talk too much of the, what we call a kind of mainstream uh, horology. And uh, we focus a little bit more on uh, independent brands, niche brands, because I, uh, we feel that uh, that's where we find most of the creativity over the last uh, few years. And uh, not only creativity, but also, I mean, true passion from the people that are behind these watches. And this is what we like. I mean, for us, a watch is only the end result of many different processes that happened before. And this is what we like to focus on. So through our videos, indeed, we try to uh, portray this, show the people and, uh, Try to make it as entertaining as possible. And if people learn a little something at the same time, <laughs> perfect. In this very place, a hundred years ago, was an atelier de, de rabillage. So meaning that um, a place where people would come and have their uh, watches uh, serviced and so forth. Mm. So uh, even, uh, there is a little bit, <laughs> the if ghost, you smell, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, not far away. The so, ancestors are here. <laughs> exactly. So it's a, it's a nice place, obviously, to host people. And yeah. uh, the goal is to, I mean, of course, today is a bit complicated mm -hmm. uh, considering the situation. But uh, the goal is indeed to have like an open place. Like it, this is a club. We call yes. it a club and the goal is to have people come by and having a drink and talk about watches and chat so about forth. everything. Yeah. Chat about everything, exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's a cool setup. I really, uh, I saw this many times in the videos. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah. But in person, it's actually a much, much bigger space. And like you said, the, the, the spirit of the old building just, just looks cool. Yeah. And uh, the streets are very artisanal. Yeah. So I think uh, you're right. More brand should be a bit more here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also a few, uh, there's a couple of people that are indeed also doing this rabillage, uh, the, the servicing here in the old town. Uh, there's also like kind of a watchmaking school, basically. I mean, where you have mm -hmm. like introduction to uh, watchmaking, where you can yeah. go and sit around for half a day and play around with a watch <laughs> and things like that. So no, it's nice. Yeah. So guys, I'm gonna also put the link to Mark's YouTube channel in the description below. Again, for for this one person who doesn't follow him already, shame on you, That's do it right. now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Gr you. Great content for sure. For, for not for days, but for, for years uh, to watch and to learn something from. So without further ado, let's jump into this beautiful selection here and tell us with which watch would you like to start and what was maybe the, the beginning for you here? Okay, so this is just like a, not a random selection, but just a, a section of a few pieces that I think I have something to say. I have something to say about every watch, of <laughs> course, but I mean, the, these ones, there's some kind of logic behind. 
I will start with this one. This is a, a, a Breitling Chronomatic from the early uh, 70s, 70 or 71, something like that. It was my dad. And actually, it was this is the first watch I got, the first serious mechanical watch I got when I was a kid, basically. And uh, previous to that, I mean, like everybody at the time, you had the Timex uh, digital and thing like that, and it was so cool. Uh, but uh, when I got this one around age 15, uh, then it, it kind of triggered something. Uh, I've always liked mechanical watchmaking. I've always, you know, like, where I mean, we're kind of boys and of the mechanical <laughs> thing, it, it, it kind of draws us a little bit more into it. But this one, nevertheless, is uh, at the time, not many of my friends were wearing mechanical watches. Mm -hmm. And I really like this one. Of course, it has this kind of retro vintage feel to it because it's it is from the, the, that age. Uh, but I like these, uh, in particular, I mean, these big rectangular orange hands. Yeah. I think they really, they're, they're, there's really something. Uh, I like the sub counters. It's a really fun and cool watch and it has been working since ever, okay? I serviced <laughs> it maybe a couple of times. Not very good, I should have done it a bit more often. <laughs> but nevertheless, it just runs uh, absolutely uh, perfectly. Mouse. So cool. it's a watch that has obviously a personal uh, dimension to it because of my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also, yeah, like I said, not only that, it's also the one that kind of just immediately said, oh, this is really kind of interesting. It's a chrono. I like chronos since ever. I have quite a few. Uh, and it's the fun thing about this one is that so the movement, this chronomatic uh, uh, movement is a kind of a common platform that was used not only by Breitling, but also by Tag Heuer. It's mm -hmm. kind of a co-development uh, between a few players. And uh, it's kind of a sandwich uh, type of architecture. It's automatic. It has a micro rotor, but when you open up the, the, yeah. the, the, the watch, you don't, you don't see the rotor. It's really, okay. it's, it's kind of stuck uh, in between, in the, the, between. the yeah. plates. Yeah. And one of the particularities that it's kind of inverted where you have the crown on the left side mm, yeah. uh, compared to uh, most uh, chrono watches. The sub dials are cooler, like yeah. a bit, uh, a bit asymmetric. asymmetric. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a cool watch. And uh, when I wear it today, I wear it quite often. I generally indeed get uh, a few comments of, oh, what is this? What is that? And so forth. And people uh, indeed like it. And, but the thing that is interesting is that 10 years ago when I used to wear this, People weren't necessarily that, you know, they, they wouldn't pay too much attention mm -hmm. to it. And since five, six years, since development of the interest mm -hmm. with vintage watches, more people are kind of a little bit attentive and say, oh, yeah. well, well, what is this and so forth. So it shows that with this trend, for sure. uh, the, 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 the eye of uh, people has evolved. For sure. And for me, I always say to the people, this is the best type of watch because it has a personal meaning to you, right? Yeah. The price doesn't matter. Do you want to sell it? No. No. It's really, you know, from the heart. Yeah. So that's what watch collecting, I think, should be yeah. always, you know. But re regarding the price point, something also interesting is that, I mean, you can find mm -hmm. similar type of watches at the pretty reasonable price, yeah. you know. And uh, so it's not, I understand it's not very easy to spend immediately 20,000 mm -hmm. uh, Swiss franc on a watch when you're uh, yeah. in your 20s or whatsoever. But it doesn't mean that you don't have access to watches yes. that are indeed pretty cool. And uh, you just have to follow, uh, I mean, here in Switzerland, we have kind of a local eBay, uh, mm -hmm. yes. and I, we look at that. I look at eBay, of course. <laughs> I look at many other, other things. I look at watch auctions, and uh, there are many possibilities of finding a cool watch at a rather uh, decent price. I see there's a few watches here mm -hmm. which are also in this more achievable price point mm -hmm. and lucky finds. I would also yeah. say. Yeah. I mean, we have wristwatches. I have a couple of clocks, also mm -hmm. uh, table clocks that uh, that I like. Uh, and a few years back, I started to get a bit more interested into uh, pocket watches because I think there are just good deals to be made. Yes, missed. absolutely. Uh, and uh, if you want, even I mean, like kind of a super type complicated mm -hmm. watch, you can find it at a really uh, the, the decent price. 15, 20 years ago uh, on the auction scene, uh, pocket watches were obviously hitting the, the, the roof uh, once in a while, uh, but then the interest kind of mm -hmm. uh, faded away and everybody went back to uh, the wrist watches. But I think uh, pocket watches, again, it's a true and fine example of where we come from. Uh, I mean, th this was watchmaking until the early 20s century yeah. and uh, this example I mean it's a 1924 Patek Philippe uh, which was made for um, retail by uh, 
uh, by Tiffany at the time, so it's a Tiffany, it's Tiffany engraved uh, movement inside. Yeah. Uh, I'm not too big fan of uh, the, the of the dial. It's a little bit heavy, <laughs> I would say, but I understand and I like to appreciate the craftsmanship behind. Uh, that's for sure. But the movement is absolutely beautiful, wow. and um, no, it's a, and it's just a, a nice object. It's, it's, it's something very sensual I think with pocket watches because of their shape and yeah. they, it's, there's some it feels like a soap sometimes you know it just has <laughs> something it's just, just nice uh, to, to be touched yeah. and yeah like I said in terms of complication you can find even kind of minute repeaters yes. and crazy things at a rather uh, interesting price so I've kept uh, buying uh, pocket watches I have a few and uh, recently uh, I bought uh, the this one uh, and this is quite funny indeed because I just figured out that I wasn't the only one interested in this uh, in this one. Uh, it's a nice uh, Le, Le Coultre from uh, from the 40s. It has all the time kind of an extra uh, power reserve, but the movement is extremely it's beautiful. Yes. It's really really nice with a, a nice base plate. Uh, I mean, really nicely finished. And so I was interested in this watch. Indeed, I liked everything. I liked the numerals. I liked the hands. I liked the size. I like uh, this uh, kind of, indeed, bit kind of Art Deco mm -hmm. feel to it. So I was bidding on this uh, eBay thing, but turns out that you were bidding too. Uh, yes, yes. So I mentioned this platform a few times before, and people in Switzerland usually tell me don't mention it too often because we'll get more competition. <laughs> You're right. So uh, we will not mention the name of the no. biggest Swiss very difficult to find. platform. Yeah. Very difficult to find. Yeah. But I was also bidding on this exact watch and I, I showed him before in the app um, that he outbid me basically. Um, yeah, so congrats. <laughs> it's nice to see it in yeah, person. It's, nice. it's funny to, to see who you are. Like you, you said, the, the woman is beautiful. Yeah. Huh? Wow, the, the decoration of the, the main plate is just insane. And the price wasn't too high, right? But with auctions, you never know. No. You know, I had a bit of an ego, so I pushed a bit more. But then I said, okay, this is enough. So you took it over. I'm happy that you got it at the end, because yeah. it's definitely a good steal. And this is the power reserve indicator? That's, yeah, that's a power reserve indicator. So now it's just showing, indeed, because of the, the red color, that yeah. it is, uh, there's not much power reserve. Uh, yeah. yeah, and so we just wide it up and wow, uh, off it goes. Yeah, but it's, it's really nice. It's very, it works absolutely beautifully. Yeah. Uh, it's very precise. And uh, yeah, no, I just uh, I just like it. So it's watches that I don't. I mean, I don't uh, carry with yeah, them. You don't uh, with wear it? No, not that often. <laughs> with a big gold chain, something like that. Yeah. And I uh, used to wear a three-piece suit, but uh, those are kind of gone now. Also, so one day maybe I'll uh, I'll reuse it uh, like that. Yeah. But yeah, Gorgeous. pocket watches are interesting. And there's something really special uh, yes. about them. And again, a nice link between where watchmaking comes from and where we are uh, today. Absolutely. So a nice way of paying tribute to that. Gorgeous, and congrats again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that was I am, uh, I am, when I see it now in person, I, I should have bid more, but I'm happy that you got it. But it's now a, I'm gonna sell it to him twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna cut that. Maybe you can put it a beep or something. Yeah. So, I mean, Marco, I was just joking about uh, selling it to you because actually I, I, I keep all my watches. I buy them and I keep them. I, I haven't I've never sold any single watch I, I bought. So it's, that's why they're kind of stacking up a little bit. But uh, I'll, I'll like be them. watching. I'll be watching right? Right. the platform we shouldn't mention. <laughs> that's right. So which one would you like to present us next? Well, I'll continue a little bit with uh, this uh, vintage world with two example, two chronograph examples from uh, Beauvais. Uh, Beauvais is a, is a house that I like a lot. Uh, I mean, it's very quite classical, but it's just, uh, and I understand that maybe some, for, for some people it's a bit too much in, uh, mm -hmm. today, but nevertheless, it's just so extremely well executed. Uh, it, they are really beautiful. So when I found uh, the, this, uh, this chrono, I uh, kind of immediately uh, fell in love because it's uh, dates from 1949. And it's just the, the condition is just impeccable. I mean, yeah. it looks almost new. I mean, the dial is just, I love this kind of champagne dial, you know, uh, and it's just really nice. It's super elegant. This is full gold case because at the time, a um, lot of watches were steel and then they were just gold plated. And this next example uh, will illustrate this. But coming back on this watch, there's something just, I mean, really elegant. Of course, the sizes were smaller at the time, but it's just, it's just a yeah, fantastic watch. And it, it runs also extremely well. 
Uh, I love the pushes of uh, the chronograph. You can activate it. You'll feel it's very soft. It's really comfy. Uh, there's something, you know, mm. just and it, it, there's, yeah. yeah, it's really. It's, it feels uh, like new. Huh? Yeah, it, but it's really, <laughs> really nice. Obviously, at the time, uh, the, the the watches weren't um, watertight like mm -hmm. they are uh, today, so you don't have all the the joints around it, which is explains why sometimes it's a bit hard mm. to push on the yeah. pushers. Okay, yeah. here it's kind of free, so makes which sense, makes it yeah. a little bit more easy to stop uh, and um, reset uh, your, your your chrono and actually this one which, which is cool is that it comes with the original oh, box wow. and the paper of the watch and this is you know it's it's even it's uh, dated eh? everything so I mean it just it, wow. it, it, it creates an even stronger link uh, so, so somebody bought this watch back then and looks like didn't wear it almost <laughs> almost almost yeah, yeah, yeah. the paper yeah. is like new yeah. the box oh. is like new no, no, Amazing. It's, uh, no, it's, uh, Great it's find, yeah. so I wear it uh, uh, quite often uh, I have this other example and uh, this one is also uh, this is 1949 kind of a bit more of a, of a, of a workhorse so it's a slightly uh, larger and uh, the previous model but like I mentioned you see here you see that it's a it's actually a steel case mm -hmm. okay this you see a lot with the 1950s type of watches meaning that uh, the the back case which you wouldn't see where when you're wearing it mm -hmm. they didn't you know, they cut corners basically yeah. and kept it uh, in steel, whereas the visible part would have been uh, plated. But nevertheless, I mean, it's still the the, the plating is has been well done, well preserved, uh, because sometimes it can you know fade yes. away a little bit and then looks sometimes not so great. But this one indeed uh, is just uh, just works. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's really in a in a good shape. So I just changed the bracelet, but this. Uh, green leather bracelet with it goes I think pretty well uh, with it and uh, I really like it. So one thing I also wanted to mention regarding vintage chrono because I have some collector friends that say oh well we Mm -hmm. We don't like them, you know, we, we wear them, but we don't necessarily like to have the chrono running. But okay. uh, for me on the chrono, I, I like to see this big yeah, hand of course. turn around. Uh, but some people say, okay, well, you're, you're kind of stressing out a bit too much the movement for unnecessary reason. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's, uh, but I just like to enjoy my watches and wear them. Uh, okay, I'm, um, I try to be as careful as possible, but at the same time, you know, if I'm not changing my behavior because yeah. I'm wearing this watch or another watch, I mean, it's... Uh, of course, yeah, and you also, you, you have watchmakers as neighbors. <laughs> worst case, worst case, <laughs> worst indeed. Case. Yeah, yeah, no, really nice examples. Uh, Beautiful and, numerous uh, as well. Yeah, the, no, no, it's... Uh, patina it's, is super nice. Yeah, this one has a bit more patina. This one is just crisp, like... Yeah, this uh, one, yeah. like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like you bought uh, it yeah, yesterday. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Gorgeous. Yeah. And the strap is also cooler. Yeah, nice like color. That. Yeah, uh, it goes, uh, goes well together. So, Monsieur, what's the next one you want to show us? I see also you have one that I also own. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the so big boy of the industry. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> indeed. And this one, I think, is a good uh, transition. A Swatch System 51, I think, is a very meaningful watch. And I salute the, what the, the, the Swatch Group did at the time because I mean it was really kind of a, a, a ballsy decision basically to say okay we're going to invest hundreds of million into a new factory in Switzerland uh, to do cheap yeah. mechanical uh, watch and for the price I mean it's just unbelievable yes. and it's also extremely comfortable to wear yeah, it's it super has light, yeah. super light it has 88 hours of power reserve yeah. I mean it's it's really cool obviously it's uh, what I like again with mechanical watchmaking is the sustainability dimension of a yeah. mechanical watch meaning that this watch in a hundred year I mean if you yes. if there are still watchmaker at the time <laughs> they will be able to fix it okay? hope so yeah <laughs> no, they should they should uh, and we're there for this also yes. yeah just to, to help out the, to support uh, anyhow it's this this watch obviously doesn't have this. I yeah. mean, this is like a um, bit like of an iPhone. If it doesn't yes. work, unfortunately, or like a disposable camera. yeah, it's, it's just. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but again, for the price, it's kind of okay. The only thing that obviously was a little bit bothering is just in terms of design. I think uh, yeah. yeah, the yeah. first few editions they could have done something a bit uh, a bit nicer. But still, I like what it uh, represents. Yes, uh, I find it a little bit uh, disappointing uh, that. It hasn't taken mm -hmm. more, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's something it's when it came out, it was really a big thing, Boom. something and, and, and that was acknowledged and appreciated by basically everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody really liked what had been mm -hmm. done. 
but then it kind of just like died out. Yeah. Died out. And uh, I believe with proper marketing and uh, proper design also, yeah. there's something, it, this should have been a huge success yes. and a nice way for people to mm -hmm. enter the world of mechanical watches without taking too much of a financial hit, yeah, I would say, sure. you know, you can, I still believe in the future of the System 51. Mm -hmm. They're doing things uh, yes, currently, yeah. so, that, so, they, so that's they, good. They do some marketing and different collaborations. Different with, collaborations. With watch blogs and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, and really successful, yeah. so. But I agree with you, there, there could be some different designs because the movement and the way they create it is, is unique. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the price point, just so people know, it's around 150 Swiss francs, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. But you remember when it came out, it was quite <laughs> difficult to get them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There, was a, yeah. there was really yes, a queue yes. and I had friends calling me and yeah. saying, oh, can you buy me one in Switzerland? It'd be easier and, and, and so and forth. And the black one was the fancy one yeah. that came out. Yeah. <laughs> this fancy. is more proper, stylish, you yeah. know. <laughs> dress or dress watch material, let's say. <laughs> but yeah, showing that with uh, commitment, with risk taking, mm -hmm. there are things that are yeah. possible to be done in Switzerland. Still today. Huh? Still today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, not many could have, would have been able to take that risk yes. uh, uh, at the time. So sure. it's, uh, it's just find it a little bit disappointing when you did that much, you know, just not to do the little yeah, extra, a little, uh, more. little more and uh, to, to, to keep it uh, uh, up there. Again, your channel, what I also love about it is you showcase watches, which you often don't get to see on other channels, mm -hmm. right? So this watch, I would never know it exists. Uh, I would probably never see one in person. When I saw it on your video, I immediately went to the website to check out the pricing and all that stuff. I think it was gone by the time I went there. Yeah. <laughs> What is this? Yeah, <laughs> what this are is... we looking at? <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks a bit bizarre. I uh, completely uh, understand. But yeah, this is again a fantastic example of uh, where watchmaking could be going. Yeah. You know, uh, basically, this is a kind of a young kid uh, that is behind, but it's not his first watch. Okay, the guy is a serious watchmaker, has been working for really important uh, brands, R&D, and you know, really, I mean, really working on the type of crazy watches that, uh, yeah. that we like. But at one moment, he got a little bit tired of this and he wanted to do his own thing, but he mm -hmm. wanted to do something differently. He didn't want to come out with a round three-hander yeah. uh, and tried to push a little bit the, the limits. So uh, he decided that he wanted to build basically the world's lightest mechanical watch. He just did what had to be done to make it and at the same time, keeping it at a rather reasonable price. Yes. So uh, this watch is mechanically uh, driven. It's not automatic, you have to wind it. Uh, but the entire thing, strap included, weighs only 28 <laughs> grams. So I mean, you just don't feel it <laughs> yeah, on, on, no. the, on the watch. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the case is made out of um, carbon. It's a special type of carbon uh, used in uh, Formula One, but it's 3D printed. Okay. So that's why he could do this at the, the, shape, the shape at a rather reasonable price. Of course, to uh, optimize the weight, everything. I mean, this is plexiglass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just, you know, they, he, he really, well, like a Formula One, just every yeah. little mi microgram that you can. Uh, Anything that's not needed, not has, needed to go. has to okay. go. Exactly. So, again, for the price, wasn't that expensive. Mm -hmm. If I recall, it was 2,800 euros. Yes. But for the this is watch. Exactly. This is fun. Okay. Yeah. I was wearing it uh, once uh, when I was staying in uh, in Dubai uh, during the Dubai Watch <laughs> Week, actually. And uh, in Dubai, I mean, Richard Mille is a huge yes. thing. Okay. Yes, yes. I mean, everybody's wearing the, the, yeah. the Richard Mille. And all these guys wearing their Richard Mille. I said, what the, what, what, what are you wearing? <laughs> and they, what is this? And, like that. and everybody found it so immensely cool. Yes. So it's funny to have guys that had indeed 300 grand watches on their, on their wrist. And then this, and, and one guy actually took it and he said, oh, I need to show this to a friend and thing like that. And the friend was there, oh my God, this is extraordinary, extraordinary. How much is it? So the guy was just playing around a little bit and said, okay, well, no, it costs about $30,000 uh, and thing like yeah. that. And the other guy was going, Oh yeah, okay, oh, not that. Yeah, because sense. of course, if you compare it to the Richard Mille, uh, but it's, uh, it's, I mean, it, uh, it's, it's different things. But nevertheless, kind of my cheap Richard Mille. <laughs> <laughs> but original. And the guy is creative. He did this and then moved on. Okay, uh, okay. did the first series, and now he's coming out with a, a new thing. Yeah, yeah, a bit 
also kind of crazy uh, wow. the design, but maybe a bit more, you know, the finishing a little bit different and so forth, a bit more. So, uh, what so we should have our eyeballs again on the next video. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Another good point to yeah. subscribe and not to miss out again. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But again, what's fun is that you know we're talking about a hundred hundreds year old uh, craft, and to have young guys that are in it and passionate mm -hmm. and trying to come up with new things and they do come up with new things it's like i said before we've done more than 1000 video reports we haven't yeah. really repeated ourselves in any single video and so it just proves that there are still so many things to stories to cover uncover and uh, there is still a lot of creativity uh, out there Again, then we have for many a grail watch for myself as well. Yeah, I call them also in the holy trinity of independence. Yeah. Tell us something about this brand, and I know you have a very close association with MBNF. We see also somebody lurking behind us there yes. on the top shelf, the Balthazar table clock. Yeah, tell us the story about the MBNF. For me, this watch is obviously uh, very symbolic because it's. Some, it associates things that are important for me, meaning this link between the past, yeah. today, and where we're going. And this has a bit of everything of that inside it. It's been launched 10 years ago, yeah. like us. It's well, like so we're yeah. sell, we're, that's <laughs> another closer link uh, okay. we're, uh, with it. It's probably one of the first video report I did also yeah. was on the, uh, on the LM1. What's really interesting is that, okay, MBNF, we're doing those crazy HM uh, watches, mm -hmm. horological uh, machines, very exuberant. Even though uh, Max Busser, when he created MBNF, said, we will never do a round watch, you know? <laughs> uh, that was kind of, and then bang, and he, he just nailed it yeah, with this yeah. one. It's just, it's, just, it's just so fantastically yes. made. The architecture of the watch is just so well constructed. I mean, it's just, everything is, is you, you feel that everything has been fully integrated mm. and developed to come up with something as successful, I would say, yes. as beautiful, as yes, yes. yes. symmetrical, everything is in line. And the, 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 the thing that is funny is that, okay, so it has indeed this link with the traditional type mm -hmm. of watchmaking. I mean, the movement, it looks very, almost a movement that you can find mm -hmm. in the pocket watch. Pocket watch. Yeah, yeah. But then having this balance wheel there floating yes. in the middle, yeah. I was kind of a shocker for many people <laughs> at the time. And the power know. reserve indicator. The, that's the three-dimensional yeah. power reserve indicator. And it's practical. I mean, it's a dual time zone, basically, or you can use it uh, to chronograph, uh, uh, to measure time on one side, you know, sure, just, yeah. I mean, sure. you have different uh, possibilities. But I mean, furthermore, I mean, the most important, obviously, is it's the design aspect. Yes. I mean, it's just, yeah. it just stands out. And though you have this domed glass, it's, it, if you look at just like that, it might feel a little bit thick, but it's not. Yeah. If you look at it, I mean, it's, it's still, it's, it's it, it works. Yeah. It's, you know, it's very it's just, tight, huh? yeah. very... And when it's on the wrist, it's it's not something that pops out mm -hmm. or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So this is a watch I wear a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I really wear it a, a, a lot and I, I, I just love it. Obviously, it was kind of the craziest uh, piece I bought yeah. in terms of pricing. Yeah. But like I said, it, it just encompasses well, it's worth it, so, yeah, so many things. And it was nice 10 years ago, it's nice today, and it will be nice Absolutely. in 10 years. It's timeless yeah. uh, with this timepiece. It looks like it came out yesterday, yeah. you know? It's yeah. like, didn't age at all. Yeah. So the, the other edition that came after, LM2, LM3, uh, the perpetual calendar, this Oof. is like, like that, that's really <laughs> my holy grail, I have to say. But uh, yeah, still already very happy of yes. uh, having and wearing uh, this one. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And again, for a, a brand like MBNF to, to, to have come up with something like that, you know, just be able to, to stand on two different feet with the crazy approach mm -hmm. to watchmaking. And I think that the, one of the latest example that we've just seen recently, you know, about the HM9, the yes. sapphire version is just insane <laughs> it's just absolutely crazy and at the same time having these kind of watches it's just there's there's just a nice equilibrium between yes. uh, between both this one's for the office and the other ones are for the weekend yeah and you know the collaboration with Jean-François Mojon from Cronaut yeah, and absolutely. Harry Boutilain, I mean yeah there's, yes. there's, there's three watchmakers in yeah. this one watch. It's yeah. insane. It's really uh, it really it 
I mean, this uh, MB plus F, the, mm -hmm. the friends thing. I mean, it's. I mean, you have many different uh, suppliers that have yep. worked uh, uh, on it. That they're transparent about mm -hmm. it. I find this extremely important because watchmaking has always worked like that. I mean, and today, because of the situation, because of the verticalization of the industry, many suppliers are being hit, unfortunately, quite hard. And yep. this is really sad because watchmaking has always been like a, a network of different people specialized in their little field of competencies, and then the brand établisseur would mm -hmm. assemble everything uh, to, together and there's nothing wrong with that you know it's uh, d does it really is it that important to say that your movement is in house or whatsoever mm -hmm. i'm not so convinced i understand yeah. for some brands it can make sense i mean if you are a you know, rolex or patek or whatever but i mean for for some others seriously is it really really yeah. that important what's important is that what's inside is kind of the best of of the, mm -hmm. of the world that is existing put in yeah. uh, to, 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 together. So yeah, no, this watch, I will, like I said, I will be wearing it with pride in uh, 10, <laughs> 15, 20 years for sure. Yeah, so con definitely con not something. Congrats. This Thank is you. again a beautiful piece that shows the development, you know, and your love for watches because uh, you don't have only the hype pieces. You have no hype pieces here, basically, which I like, like about you. And you have bucket watches, vintage Kronos, MBNF, uh, just perfect. The, the, the clocks, I see many clocks in this <laughs> this, uh, this club as well. I mean, Mark, amazing. I just, I'm just, uh, I'm a bit fanboy here now because <laughs> I've seen it so many times. <laughs> so do you have any, any? I know the, the, the term Grail watch is, uh, you know, always, uh, it's not problematic, but it's hard to pick one watch. Sure. But you mentioned already, the Perpetual from MBNF could be one of them. Yeah. Do they have something on your radar for the future or you just, you just buy depends what, what what bites you well uh, I have like a very kind of opportunist <laughs> type of behavior and yeah. depending on what I could see but uh, no there are obviously plenty of watches that yeah. I would love to uh, put my uh, hands on and I'm not talking about I any mean, things that are just completely unreasonable mm -hmm. I mean I'm a huge fan of the Grubel Force AGMT. Yes. Oh, <laughs> um, unfortunately, yeah. it, it might take a little while before <laughs> I'm on my wrist. But that's the cool thing. It's just that yeah, there, there is this eternal kind of appetite, yeah. you know. Yeah. And discovering um, of yeah. new pieces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. you think you have a grail, they come up with another one. You're like, God yeah. damn it. <laughs> no. Change the list again. And they, they, they. That's, I think, the fun part about discovering watches. It, it's a never-ending story, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's something I really enjoy myself as well and people ask me this often also, what's your clear watch? I'm like, I'd rather not answer because it's even for me too hard sometimes to decide on one or 10, 20, you know. <laughs> so Mark, thank you so much for, you know, allowing me to, to, to show my audience this beautiful collection also in your gorgeous studio club here, which I'm uh, really again fanboying on about. <laughs> so, you have a signature also on your uh, videos, uh, Viva Watchmaking. Yeah. What, what's that all about? How did it start? Uh, it really came out completely naturally. <laughs> but uh, uh, what kind of what's behind is that indeed let's you know celebrate uh, watchmaking and uh, let's do it in in a pleasurable mm -hmm. uh, manner. Uh, I yeah. mean, watches is all about pleasure. You, mm -hmm. you don't buy a watch because you want to make your life complicated, okay? <laughs> you, want to, you buy a watch because it's a little pleasure that you yes. grant to yourself. And what this notion of pleasure for me is extremely important because you find it at every single level behind uh, behind the watch. I mean, most people that I see that uh, in uh, manufacturers or other places, uh, suppliers, artisans, well, you name it, uh, they are all invested with some kind of mission and they all feel very passionate and they have a lot of pleasure doing things. So this Viva watchmaking is in a way of, is, is a way of celebrating yes. this entire ecosystem coming from the guy that thinks about the watch to obviously the, main, the guy that makes the industry happen, yeah. meaning the end customer. I mean, watchmaking, we're talking basically of, we're talking about engineering, we're yes. talking about fine, extreme, uh, fine, complicated, uh, complicated yeah. small, intricate mechanism. Uh, so it's very serious, hmm. but it doesn't mean that you have to take yourself too seriously True. Uh, uh, talking about it. True, you're completely right, and I, I like it. It's, it's, it's fun because people think, oh, you have to be serious when you talk about watches. No, it's a fun topic. It's, you know, loosen up, uh, have a drink, and just discover, you know, a new watch today. At this point, I would also invite my audience to ask Mark some questions in the comment section below. 
or on some of his videos. Again, you have a lot to discover there. So leave a comment below and also like and share this video. It always does help the algorithm to push the videos a bit further. <laughs> and also congrats again on the 10th anniversary. It's, it's a big achievement. Huh? Yeah, it is uh, one of those milestones. You know, when we crossed 100,000 subscribers, that was a nice milestone. Yes. Now 10 year, another nice milestone. So hopefully, if I mean, depending on the situation uh, in uh, this fall, uh, in September, we are hopefully be able to do like a Viva watchmaking party here in Geneva. <laughs> and I will be more than happy to uh, host you uh, for, for this. Uh, thank you very much for having you, uh, having me on your, on your, on your show. <laughs> oh, it's, so it's, it's my show. Yeah, because I'm not used to it, okay? This is kind of a very uh, unusual for me to get interviewed. To be the yeah, guest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, it's quite fun too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I would absolutely uh, love to come and uh, see you again and see the space again. So that was pretty much it for today's uh, very cool collector's interview. I'm so happy again to have had you on the show. Thank you guys for watching and in the Watches TV fashion, Viva watchmaking. That's right, Viva watchmaking. <laughs> <laughs>